I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Benjamin Moy, who is one of the panelists uh, for the talk today. He's he's joined us from Singapore Simmons, and uh, he's he's a great friend and he's a great evangelist of the technology in that region. And uh, he has been working with uh, Additive uh, for for quite some time now, and he is in the organization where I think. Uh, it is one of the high, highest invested uh, organization in the world right now for additive and uh, that's how we see uh, the region where we are like the the southeast asia and the southeast region uh, where most of the uh, energy requirement is coming in and a uh, lot of lot of people are looking at uh, additive as a solution uh, so so today he'll be joining us he'll be talking about uh, additive uh, manufacturing in the power sector. Benjamin, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Thanks, Ankit. Thanks for having me here today. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've been following additive manufacturing for quite a while. And, and as Siemens, I think we've been on this journey for quite a while. Uh, and I hope to share as much much as I can. Yeah, so so thanks for having me. Uh, I think we are we're very privileged to be here. Uh, Ankit and I go back quite quite a while, a long way. Uh, and we've been talking about additive manufacturing for quite some time. Um, and I, I'll, I'll share as much as we can. Uh, Siemens has been leading or has been doing, we're looking at additive for over eight years already. Uh, we'll talk about our progress and, and, and share as much as we can on what we see the future for additive uh, might be. Companies like Siemens and others like GE or some other can can you tell me like what kind of a thought process goes when you start identifying a technology like additive for your supply chain because you are such a big organization that implementing something new takes a lot of time, lot of effort, lot of people's uh, engagement in, in the project. So, so can can you tell me about your journey sure. about the organization's journey? Sure, sure. So generally Siemens is very uh, cutting edge. We, we are a very innovative company and I would say 60% of us are actually more engineers uh, uh, within the organization. So we have a huge pool of engineers within our, our teams. Um, and usually the ideas come out from the divisions itself, from the product lines. So the ideas are sprout up from the bottom up and, and then our corporate R&D teams take over and, and try to spread the, the good stuff to all the other divisions. Mm -hmm. So specifically to, to additive, I think we, we started our journey about I would say like, like eight years ago, and today we we put on three different hats. Um, not many, not many people know this. Uh, one we put on a software hat where we develop uh, NX CAD and simulation and generative designs to support the the, the design portion of, of of additive manufacturing to make mm -hmm. it simplified and easier for customers to design for AM. We also mm -hmm. put on the hat of in OEM, uh, in oil and gas, where we also try to optimize our designs using 3D printing uh, so that it's lighter and more functional and easier to service. Uh, we have a third hat, which you have mentioned earlier on, where we recently acquired materials uh, as a services bureau. So we function in three different roles, um, and, and I'm proud to say that material solutions, we recently opened up a, a, a second branch uh, the original branch is based in UK, and now yes. we're based in the US. So we're trying to reach out to as many uh, AM interested uh, customers to support them in their growth uh, and, and adoption for AM. Mm -hmm. So, so how do you see a decision making trend uh, uh, for an organization like Simmons on selecting the right component, selecting the right process, selecting the right? Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, quantity or something like uh, what, what is the decision making uh, Simmons do for their implementation? Yeah, so we have a very clear strategy uh, in terms of additive manufacturing, especially in oil and gas. Uh, our energy team has a very strong focus on converting at least 20% of our gas turbine designs to using additive. Um, at the moment, we are, we're working towards that 200 different components sort of target. Um, mm -hmm. Specifically for the gas turbines, uh, this has sort of uh, propagated to our compressors, our steam turbines as well. So I think there is an inherent strategy on, on a product level basis uh, rather than component basis. Now the site in you know, the production uh, manufacturing houses are catered for just the oil and gas uh, division building part. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Moy, I, I also wanted to ask you, uh, like, how uh, 
how Simmons because they have such a big fleet and uh, from a steam to gas to high pressure to uh, now you have acquired Rolls Royce steam, uh, uh, the fleet of turbines. So how do you identify key components? How are you like working with the legacy components or the MROs or how are you convincing your end customers for something like auditor? Yeah, I think the, the, the good thing is we are OEM for our equipment. Um, so when we implement, implement new technology, that, that's the equipment that we have stand by our, our product and stand by the liability and risks involved. So at least for the new machines, uh, we always show performance improvements uh, mm-hmm. through additive, uh, both from a lightweight uh, initial perspective when we go off top platforms. Uh, but I think for the MRO side, is, is where we are also trying to recapture some lost ground. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a huge fleet of, of gas turbines out there, uh, the A bonds and the fiber ones that are already in, in, in India. Yes. Uh, they were trying to cap, uh, sort of pull back for the improvements that are using uh, mm-hmm. One of the, the things that, that, that we are struggling with is because it's a, a legacy fleet. Uh, a lot of, of the, the old drawings uh, don't exist, and all of those are in the paper drawings. So we need to do the conversion. We needed to reverse engineering and, mm-hmm. and most importantly the kind of fleet that's out there. So the the, the MRO side, the, the legacy fleet that we're trying to target, uh, we struggle a little a bit because the commercial value of improvements is not there. You know, yes. These equipments have been running for 60 years. Uh, so mm-hmm. most customers are looking for short fixes. Uh, it, it, it's a workhorse, if you will, the Avon. Exactly. Um, so giving them any additional AM improvements, the cost value isn't there. Yeah, mm-hmm. Even though they want to run, run, uh, they can run at least another twenty years more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, 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 how do you like? Uh, let's say if you want to product productionize, let's say in your Finspong facility or your Berlin facility or mm-hmm. the Worcester, the Bertil Solution mm-hmm. facility. So, how do you like? tackle because Simmons is not just a, a part manufacturing or a OEM they are also on the software side they work a lot mm-hmm. on the software side and mm-hmm. as as we are an user so we also understand how an important role software is also play mm-hmm. so that uh, batch for utilizing in different facilities around the globe how mm-hmm. do you how, how do you manage that through through your software so yeah so so we have what, what you have mentioned before, one of the panelists has mentioned before, digital inventory, where each of the locations are, are sort of focused on a particular range of equipment. And once that equipment design for AM has been qualified, it's been it's put on this global database, inventory database. Mm-hmm. So the various sites are able to replicate the same uh, spare parts that we have, uh, and there's a lot of sharing of information. And, and like you mentioned, we also do software. Yes. So whatever data that we collect from our, our production sites in Pinspong and the material solutions, all this gets fed back into software. And then we want to enhance the capability of the software, like I mentioned before, so that it simplifies the work for designers. You know, there's a lot of key buttons within NX that's about uh, compensation for lean, uh, for powder-based uh, prints. So we want to simplify the process. We want to make it accessible. We want to make it portable uh, so we can print uh, closest to the customer. So mm-hmm. we, we manage this digital inventory through the different sites, even though the focus is on different parts. Exactly. So 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 it is it is something like uh, on on project to project basis, and it is on component to component basis that decision making and certification is done at Simmons. Yes. Yes. I think the, the we would like to find more partners. I think, mm-hmm. and, and, and as Safri mentioned, quite quite successfully, so the certification is important. So, mm-hmm. wherever you go, you will find a certified uh, services bureau that mm-hmm. will be qualified to print that part for aerospace or oil and gas. Mm-hmm. And without that, that certification, you can't do that. I can't open four, five, six, seven, eight different mm-hmm. material solutions around the world. <laughs> we will eventually depend on, on, on uh, office like yourself, certified, get certified and qualified by, by Siemens so that you are able and, and you'll be certified to print our stuff on our behalf. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, so the only case I just wanted to ask is like what I've understood from an aerospace to an oil and gas or a power sector, it is like 
power requires a lot of time and the speeds are quite low mm -hmm. and yes. in aerospace it is other way around the yes. time of utilization is quite low mm -hmm. but uh, but but it is required to run really fast so so how do you work on the properties how how is that standardization qualification and certification done at Siemens well that's a, that's a one. Um, different industries have different requirements as you mentioned uh, quite successfully I think the we still design on the same principles and performance mm -hmm. uh, with our arrow derivatives that we apply from Rolls Royce. I think we still adopt that the same uh, uh, ethos. Mm -hmm. We try to apply the same uh, design uh, uh, boundaries to our larger gas turbines. Not mm -hmm. always directly applicable, um, but we generally, as I said, we try to uh, maintain different focuses at different sites on different ranges of equipment. So the team in, in, in Sweden, in Finspong, focuses on the mid-range and the aero derivatives. Mm -hmm. So they're very strong in, in that, that small space uh, mm -hmm. for the, the, the simple cycle, if you will. Uh, um, uh, gas turbines, uh, like Trent and the RB211, whereas the, the large the gas turbines, the 3000s uh, and 4000s uh, Fs, are all done in the, in the US. So there is a big gap between the two. Uh, where we try to share technologies is not so transferable I would say as you scale up mm -hmm. um, and obviously the different industries power gas versus oil and gas uh, is, is very different their requirements 